morning. Please rise while Stephen Fannis, a GED graduate who recently received his citizenship, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please welcome the very talented Cheryl Lamb Spooner, who graciously replaced Caitlin Vieira, who could not be here today, to sing the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red clear the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Good morning. My name is Bernadette Driscoll, the Dean of Adult Basic Education here at Bristol Community College. And I would like to welcome you to our 28th annual GED graduation ceremony. Please be seated. And we ask that you assist us as we begin our ceremony to please turn off all cell phones. At this time, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce you to some very special guests who had gathered here today to congratulate you on your accomplishments. If the guests on the stage would please rise while I call your name. Dr. John Sprague, President of Bristol Community College. <laughs> Michael Hull, Acting First Year Engagement Specialist. Joan Menard, Vice President of Workforce Development and Adult Basic Education. <laughs> William Flanagan, Honorable Mayor of the City of Fall River. <laughs> Carmen Batello, Director of BCC's Taunton Program. <laughs> Eileen Cruz, Director of BCC's Fall River Program. Kathleen D. Simone, Simone, excuse me, Director of BCC's Attleboro Program. Woo! And Ada Snow, Director of Workplace Literacy. <laughs> Joanne Pelletier, Vice President of Information Technology Services. <laughs> Diane Sylvia, Alumni Trustee, Board of Trustees. Deborah Kennedy, Board of Trustees. <laughs> Fernando Garcia, Chairman, Board of Trustees. <laughs> Stephen Ozak, Vice President of Student Enrollment Management. <laughs> Elizabeth McCarthy, Vice President of Resource Development. <laughs> Steve Kenyon, Vice President of Administration and Finance. 
Kathy Torpy Garganta, Associate Vice President of Enrollment Services. Tafa Awalaju, Vice President of Human Resources. Rhonda Gabovich, Vice President of Institutional Research, Planning and Assessment. Anthony Ucci, Acting Vice President of Academic Affairs. And Greg Satharis, Acting Vice President of Academic Affairs. I would also like to introduce our American Sign Language interpreters, Denise Shagnon and Genevieve Copley. For all that you have accomplished, you did not travel alone. It is only through the support of others that have accompanied you through this journey that you have been able to come to this day. There are so many people that are so very proud of you. Your parents, family, faculty, and friends. All who share in this great day and this huge achievement in your life. So please give them a round of applause. At this time, I would like for all present and former staff connected to GED programs, please rise. These individuals represent your teachers, counselors, directors, test center staff, support staff, and professional development providers. Along with myself, they know how hard you have worked to get to this day and we offer our sincere congratulations. And I know the students would like to thank you from the bottom of their heart. Thank you. Also, we would like to extend our thanks to each and all the partners and benefactors listed on the back of your program. If it wasn't for them today, we would not be able to offer these free classes that many of you have taken advantage of to prepare to take your GED test. It is an honor to be with you today to celebrate your achievement. Today is not the end of the road in your educational journey, but the beginning of great things to come. Going back to school to obtain your GED open doors for you and will enable you to accomplish any goal that you set for yourself. Earning your GED will break down those barriers and enable you to take the next step in your journey. Be proud of this accomplishment. Treasure this day and be hopeful for the future. You have persisted, worked hard, and most importantly, you believed in yourself. And that is huge. You can go anywhere now. You have already proven to yourself that you can overcome those challenges, that you can accomplish great things. This should not end with this ceremony. You are here because you wanted to achieve something, something better for yourself and something better for your family. If you persist, promise to keep moving forward and challenge yourself, it's only the beginning. What does the future hold for you? The future holds great things. Don't miss these opportunities. Take chances and go after those dreams. I would like to have you leave today thinking of two quotes that I live my life by, and I think that um, you should think of these and ponder these for a while. The first one is from Confucius. Choose a job you love, and you will never have to work a day in your life. And I know because I have been in adult ed for 29 years. And actually, one of the students here today, um, 10 years ago, I was actually a teacher to one of these students. So it does take time to get to this goal, but you've all achieved that, and that's you. So keep on going, okay? So look for a job that you're passionate about and you won't feel like you have to work. And the second one is from Gandhi. Be the change that you wish to see in this world. Thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. John Sprague, the third president of Bristol Community College. Dr. Sprague is a well-known supporter of adult basic education, and he encourages all of his staff to put the needs of learners first. Please welcome Dr. Sprague.
Thank you, Dean Driscoll, and welcome, everyone. Heartiest congratulations to you. We're very proud of you. You stand for all that is best about Bristol Community College. This is one of my favorite uh, days of the year, really, where we celebrate our GED accomplishments. We've already acknowledged the family and friends and loved ones who supported you, as well as the outstanding faculty and staff. Uh, I know, I'm sure you would agree, that you would not be here today had it not been you know, that support system that you had, and also uh, with the wonderful faculty and staff that supported you. Uh, my message today, and you're going to hear it from a lot of people, I think, is to continue on this path of uh, academic progress. You must continue this day and age in global society. You uh, uh, have to have some higher education credentials to expect the, uh, to enter into the, a meaningful job uh, nowadays. Society is becoming much more complicated. Uh, it used to be maybe you could get away with an eighth grade education uh, in the 19th century and early 20th century, and then a high school degree later to get that entry level job. But now in the 21st century, it's imperative that you uh, keep going and get some higher education credential, not just an associate's degree at a community college, uh, but a baccalaureate and who knows, even beyond into graduate school. And uh, my message to you, I guess everybody understands that, but my message to you is that it's going to be easier for you as you keep going, believe it or not. You've already completed the hardest part. If you can think back to that time, when you didn't know, you didn't even know what GED stood for, right? And someone asked you about, uh, <clears throat> or you asked someone else about going to uh, look into getting a GED and where would you go and what's BCC anyway? Uh, all those early questions that you had. Uh, those are the hardest steps and you've already taken them successfully as proved by your presence here today. Uh, you found out what a GED was, you found out where Ellsbury Street was or Attleboro Street, Attleboro, uh, Field Street in Attleboro, uh, and you move forward and taunting the same. Uh, you went to that first class, I'm sure you thought, uh, what am I doing here? I don't think I should go to this. And look what's happened. You've all come very uh, successfully through that program. That's the hardest step. The hardest step is the first step, and you've taken it. Uh, now, uh, as you move on course by course, it's just a matter of keeping one foot in front of the other and keep your eye on the ball, or keep your eye, as we call it, at Bristol, uh, Bristol Community College, the main thing. Remember, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And you're, for you, the main thing is continuing on that educational pathway, uh, one step after the other. Uh, the work is already done for you. you have, you've met already outstanding people at Bristol Community College. You are about to meet uh, um, many more as you continue in this life's journey, and we all have the one common purpose, and that is your success. Because your success means our success, and we're very proud of you, we're very proud of what we offer at Bristol Community College. We really mean it. It's not just an empty slogan when we say we change the world, we change lives, learner by learner. On an individual basis, we will change your life. Just think how your life has already changed as a result of this GED experience. So good luck to you. We're always here wherever you go. You don't have to go to BCC, but wherever you go, you always have BCC as a support for you and anything that we can do with all of our resources. We're very glad to help you out. We have an admissions table. You don't have to go to BCC, but we do have an admissions table outside the tent, and uh, I encourage you to at least look for information uh, from our, our Dean of Admissions. And speaking of our Dean of Admissions, uh, she's here with staff uh, because uh, it's Sunday, right? And who comes to work on Sunday? But they're here because of you. This, this stage is filled with the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, uh, another trustee, Diane Sylvia. Chairman Garcia uh, came here today because of his commitment to you and his commitment to Bristol Community College. You see all the, uh, uh, what we call the cabinet, the, uh, the president's uh, council members here, all the officers of the college. They're all here because of you, to honor you, to celebrate you, and to demonstrate for you the, the full support that you have of the entire BCC family. So please, please take advantage of that support, and I wish you well. In a few years, I'll be shaking your hand on this stage as you move through your associate's degree. 
and then I'll go to your graduation elsewhere when you get your baccalaureate, okay? Good luck to you, heartiest congratulations. Keep going on this step forward, thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Joan Menard. I'm the Vice President of Workforce Development, Adult Basic Education. Um, and I think after listening to our president, and you will certainly hear that from uh, the chairman of our board and the members of our board, the reason why you've been so successful is because they get it. They understand who you are, who we are, and what we need. I'd like to take a minute to not only congratulate them, for all of their hard work in making this day happen for you, but to congratulate you on this wonderful day. I know today is a result of a lot of hard work, but it's also a day of celebration, and I know all the people out here are celebrating your success and your life. We at Bristol Community College want to be a part of the rest of your life, as well as being a part of the last four, five, six, 10, 15 years. You're a member now of our family, and we're here to help you and to advise you. This is your new beginning, and you made it happen. Now keep it happening. I know it isn't easy, but for most good things, a little difficulty is always in the path, but I know you will be able to overcome that. Again, my congratulations to you and I want to introduce someone who has been an important part of our success here at BCC, a great friend of this college, the Chief Executive of the City of Fall River, Mayor Will Flanagan. Joan, thank you very much, and it's an honor for me to be back on the grounds of Bristol Community College. And this is one of the events that I look most forward to during the calendar year because you have an opportunity to hear the success stories of all of our graduates. And all of them who are here this morning have overcome some obstacle to be able to cross the stage and to receive their GED. And to the graduates, you are not crossing the stage by accident. You are crossing the stage because you've earned it. Each and every single one of you did everything you were supposed to do and more that was required of you. You studied hard, you've passed your exams, and you earned the piece of paper you're about to receive this morning. But that piece of paper that's going to be placed in your hands will unlock so many doors for you. But I encourage all of you not to stop here, to keep on going with your educational career. And as the mayor of the city of Fall River, I support an educational model from the cradle to career, from pre-K right up until a higher educational system. Because the more education you receive, the better quality of life you're going to have for you and for your families. And how proud are you today when you are now asked that question, have you earned your high school diploma or GED, you're able to answer yes. Don't stop there. Keep on going, and I encourage all of you to enroll in a two-year degree, in a four-year degree, and to keep getting everything you can to improve your quality of life. No matter what career path you choose, education is an important component of it. And when you cross this stage, you are not crossing it alone. You're crossing it with the people who are sitting here and also the people who are sitting in the audience. They're your support system. They're the ones who continued to push you to make sure that you were here today. Whether it was helping out with babysitting, cooking dinner, or just making sure you stayed up that extra hour to study, they were there for you and you can never forget them because as you cross this stage, they are crossing it with you. So to all the family and friends who are here today, I say thank you. Uh, thank you for being a part of the graduate's life because they could not have done it without you. And in conclusion, 
I just want to say that I am proud of all of you too. And I encourage you once again not to stop here. Just have this be one of the many chapters in your life. And the more chapters you continue to write, the better quality of life you're going to have. And as the mayor of this city, I wish you nothing but success and happiness in all that you choose to do. God bless you. Congratulations, graduates. Okay, next we have our guest speaker, Michael Hull. Michael Hull is a graduate of Bristol Community College's GED program many years ago. He will share his story of continuing his education and the doors that opened through his journey. More and more GED graduates are following in Michael's footsteps. I heard some great news from Rhonda Gavovich and the institutional research um, vice president. She told me that 8% of GED freshmen last year, GED enrollees at Bristol Community College were GED graduates. That was 688 students that enrolled at BCC were GED graduates. And I know that that's going to be many of you, and many of you have already taken that step. So it is possible. So now we're going to have an opportunity to hear about Michael. While Michael was attending BCC, he served as a student trustee from 2009 to 2010, in addition to working in the Office of Civic Engagement and serving as a student ambassador and sitting on multiple committees. Michael has a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science with a minor in Sociology from the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. Michael is presently in the Eastern Nazarene Master's Program in Higher Education offered here at the Fall River Campus of Bristol Community College. Please welcome Michael Hull. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations. Mr. Mayor, President Sprega, trustees, honored guests, and graduates, it is an honor to stand before you uh, today. It has special meaning for me because I too am a GED graduate right here at BCC in 1999. Like many of you, somewhere during my journey I was sidetracked by life. But thanks to this wonderful institution I was able to get back on track, reach goals I had only dreamed of, and have now set new goals that are now within my reach because I have the tools, the confidence, and belief in my ability. Maybe some of you can relate to this newfound self-confidence. As I stated, I didn't always have the confidence I have today. When I was in high school, I was dealing with a lot of personal issues that had a negative effect on my life and my education. After dropping out at 16, I worked at Stop and Shop in a few restaurants, eventually moving into the electrical trade where I stayed for 15 years. I made a good living and was able to take nice vacations and enjoy myself, but there was always something missing. I wasn't happy with my work and subsequently my life. It wasn't my childhood dream to be an electrician, and the more I thought about it, I realized I never really had a childhood dream of what I wanted to be when I grew up. In 2008, I decided to take a summer class here at BCC, and I told myself, if I do well, I'm going to enroll full-time in classes in the fall. Well, I got an A in that class, and my decision was made. So here I am, five years later, standing before you with an Associates in Arts and General Studies, a Bachelor in Arts and Political Science, and as Dean Driscoll said, uh, I'm in the Master's Program uh, through Eastern Nazarene College. But I didn't know where I'd end up when I enrolled in BCC in the fall of 2008. But now I stand before you, an educated man, and a dream job. Entering college was intimidating at first, until I started to meet other people like myself. Over the four years of my undergraduate degree, I met and worked with so many wonderful people, people like President Sprague, Vice President Ozug, Dr. Ron Weisberger, Kathy Burns. They took time to mentor me and help me achieve my goals. I saw the joy that they got from helping others, and I knew I wanted to do that same thing. 
Today I get to come to work every day and help first year students try to achieve their goals. Telling you a little bit about my story, not because I'm bragging or I think I'm special, but I want you to know that I am just like you and you're just like me. I was a high school dropout and I took it upon myself to come back as you did to get your GED, to better yourself. Robert Browning once said, a man's reach should exceed his grasp. What, he's, what he is saying is, don't settle for what is easily attainable, but strive for something better. As you move forward, wherever your life may take you, know that things probably will get tough at times. Many times when I was studying at Amherst, I wanted to give up. And at moments like that, I would think about my friends and my family and what my success meant to them. I would think about my future and the opportunities I would miss out on if I did give up. It's important at times like these that you dig deep, find your strength again, dust yourself off and get back in the game. Rem remembering motivational factors in your life, your friends, your family, your loved ones. For me, it also helped for me to remember back in high school and the people who gave up on me. Use whatever motivational factors you can uh, use to get you to your goals. So now that you've reached this goal, very well deserving one I might add, I challenge all of you to set a new goal. It doesn't have to be an educational related goal, but simply a goal to make yourself better. Maybe it's being a better parent or being a better son or daughter. Maybe it's getting help with that resume so you can have a better chance of getting a better job. Or maybe it's starting to read that novel that you said you've been do you'd read for so many years now. Because without goals, we have nothing to reach for. For many of you, this will be the end of your educational career for now. Some of you will go on to enroll in BCC and other colleges and further your education. Regardless what you decide to do from this moment forward, remember your education does not stop here. Mahatma Gandhi once said, live as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. Life is one continual learning experience. Always be willing to take new challenges on and strive for something more. I would just like to close with this. Remember who you are, where you came from, and where you're going. And remember that hard work pays dividends. And always hold your head high and remember you've earned your GED proudly. Thank you. Next we have uh, student speakers. Today's student speakers, a specialist in accomplishing what others may have not thought possible. And they have graciously agreed to share their stories with us today. The first student speaker we have is Rob Bolton from the Attleboro Program. You can do this one. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rob Bolton, and I cannot believe that I'm up here speaking to everybody at this graduation. It has been a total shock to me um, that I passed, and it has taken me three different tries over 10 years for me to finally to be able to take and pass all the GED tests. I passed all on the first try with higher scores than I thought I'd get. So after two years, uh, so after two years at BCC, I finally got my GED. As long as I can remember, I have struggled with school since a very young age. I've always had problems with learning paying attention, sitting still, uh, impulsiveness, social anxiety, being around a lot of people, and ADHD for a long time because of all the problems I have and not getting help for them. School was a daily challenge. 
in 2000. I dropped out of high school because my then girlfriend had a baby and I needed to work. I was in the 11th grade and far from having enough credits to graduate, I started working full time at night. I thought I was doing the right thing by working and giving my girlfriend money for the baby. In 2001, I began classes in a local nonprofit between work and my behavior problems. I found it very difficult to uh, focus on my studies. I also had the chance to get a better job with more money, so I stopped studying for my GED. I knew I needed my GED, but life kept getting in the way. Uh, in 2006, I tried classes again and I, again, I couldn't focus and didn't keep up with my studies. I lasted only two months in the program. In 2010, I was in a bad car accident and almost died. I realized how quickly life can be taken away from you and that I needed to get going to improve my life. In 2011, I started taking GED classes at BCC Adderall. I felt overwhelmed, and, but I felt better. The classes were structured and I was expected to attend and study. Although I had problems coming to class on time, I came and worked hard. And with the help of my teachers, I slowly improved. I sometimes came to class late and was disruptive because of my problems, but I worked hard and focused on my goal to get my GED. Even when I started to come to the adult basic education program at BCC in Attleboro, it still was very difficult for me to come to school every day. It took me a while to adjust and get used to going to school every day again. I'm lucky that the teachers and staff understood my issues and were very helpful to me in trying to stay focused on my goal. There were, they were there for me the whole time with whatever help I needed. They never gave up on me and wouldn't let me give up on myself, even though I wanted to a few times. I finally got my GED in March 2013. It felt great, like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. Getting a GED was a lot harder than high school. In high school, I had no responsibilities, and as an adult in GED classes, I had to balance school with other distractions and responsibilities. And my plans now after this is to take college classes at BCC in Attleboro. I would like to study business and finance after that, I will see where life leads me, but I feel good about the future. Thank you. Woo! Good job. You did it. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Next, Stephen Fannis from the Taunton BCC program will speak. President Spreaker, faculty members, master of ceremony, my fellow student, ladies and gentlemen, if you have ever wondered what a miracle looked like, take a good look. Because you are looking at one right now. I was born with a disability that prevented me from going to school as a child. My mother was also Illiterate, she couldn't read, so she couldn't teach me my ABCs. At the age of 13, I got an operation 
And after recuperation, my mother said, well, this, uh, it, son, it is time for you to go to school. Back then, grades were determined by age. So they put me in a class with my age group. It didn't matter to those teachers that I had never learned my ABCs. All they wanted is for me to do the work that they asked me to do, which I couldn't do. So for that reason, I was punished on a daily basis with leather belts and whips. And sometimes they would put me to stand up facing a wall, blank wall, for hours while the class is still going on behind me. Detention, they call it. Because of that, I became the laughing stock of my school. Some of the kids in my class will go out of their ways to put fights with me. And sometimes, yes, they would gang up to beat me up. After three weeks of that kind of treatment, I decide enough is enough, and I quit school. This happens to be the only time my mother has ever agreed with me. Because she knew what I was going through. I tried many times growing up to find someone to help me with my learning disabilities. But every time I try, I would be disappointed. Either the person I asked would laugh at me or they would try taking advantage of my situation. This was extremely difficult and frustrating for me. So when I moved here in the United States and I heard about the Taunton Literacy Program, I enrolled immediately. Scared and full of fear, I thought the teachers would see me as a burden because of my age and throw me out of the program. But no, they accepted me. And when they learned the true nature of my problems, they vowed one way or the other to see to it that I reach my educational goals. Learning to read and write is not an easy task. There were many sleepless nights, plenty of frustration, and a huge number of burdens. Whatever made those teachers take upon themselves this monumental challenge, I probably would not never know. But this much I know. They taught me how to read and write. They taught me how to be brave and go after my dreams. They pushed open doors and show me opportunities. And they opened my eyes to a world of opportunities I on my own would never see. Because of that, I have obtained my GED. I enrolled in the Step Up to College program and graduated last month. I joined the debate club and become the president. I also joined the radio club and have my own radio talk show right here on campus. In the middle of all of this, I took the oath of citizenship and become an American citizen. Now I am a full-time college student going forward with a 3.58 grade point average. And majoring in communications. 
to my fellow students, you didn't get here by mistake. It's your hard work and determination that brought you here. Like me, you had many nights, many sleepless nights, reading books and preparing homework. You know what it takes to be successful. So be brave and go after your dreams because you too are a part of this miracle. To all my teachers and instructors, especially the teachers and staff of Taunton Literacy Program, I say you are gigantic miracle workers. Because without you, little miracles like what is happening here today could never be possible. It is at this point I would like to ask each and every one of you from Taunton Literacy Program to please stand up and remain standing. <laughs> Remember, John Fournier, right over there, my math teacher. I probably have lost more sleep over, over your homework than anything else. <laughs> but you taught me one thing, never to give up. And you have instilled something inside of me, a work ethic that I carry with me up to this day. Don't sit down, the shoe is on the other foot. <laughs> Mary Gallagher, she's right there. Though you come late in the late stage of this, you accurately recognize my underlining problem. There's so many underlining problems and issues there was with me. And you went forward and remedied the situation by giving me time to do my work, which proved you to be right by doctors and specialists later. Thank you. <laughs> Party Driscoll, you have never given me a break. You make sure I did it all, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. And even when you notice I'm so frustrated, you carry on your duties with a smile throughout the whole ordeal. Thank you, buddy. You thought you were off the hook. Bernadette Driscoll. Please stand. <laughs> you encouraged me from the beginning never to give up. And because you encouraged me so much, you strengthened you strengthen me and gave me the foundation that brought me here today. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, your miracle workers. I want you to know that Steve added all of that at the end, ladies and gentlemen, to the Taunton program. He got a hold of me this morning. He goes, I just want to add a few little things. I said, okay, it's not too long. And he said, no. Okay, next we have Tara Horton, who is from the Dislocated Workers Program.
First and foremost, I would like to say how honored I am to have been asked to speak here today. Thank you. I will just take a few moments of your time as I would like to share with you a little bit about the journey that brought me here today. Eight years ago, my husband and I decided to start our family and we adopted our son. Kevin was seven years old at the time and was extremely developmentally delayed, emotionally traumatized, and suffered from attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Kevin's learning disabilities and trauma were blocking his ability to learn in school and were creating mountains of frustrations for him, his teachers, his dad, and me. Over time, and with a lot of love, patience, and endurance, Kevin pushed himself and began opening academic doors that we didn't believe existed. Kevin is now 14 years old. He has grown leaps and bounds academically, physically, and emotionally, and has climbed over those mountains. He has re recently received the honor of Student of the Month at his school and continues to reach for the stars. After all of Kevin's accomplishments and the fact that I was getting lost helping him do his seventh grade homework, I felt compelled to continue on with my own academic venture. So I researched some of the schools in the area and decided to join the students and staff at BCC. Hands down, it was the best decision I ever made. The staff here at BCC, including Lynn Barraby and Ada Snow, are well-educated, courteous, and helpful. They maintain a program that rates outstanding in my book. This past March, I finally did it. With the passion and guidance from the team here at BCC, I obtained my GED. I am now in the process of earning a certificate in medical office procedures and will be starting the summer semester here at BCC, studying human services with the hopes of earning a degree. Without the inspiration from my son, Kevin, and the admirable BCC team encouraging me along the way, I'm not sure if I would have taken this path. Therefore, I would like to take this opportunity to say with the greatest sincerity, thank you. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, BCC. Until March of this year, when I received my GED certificate in the mail, this moment was still just a dream and felt as if it was out of reach. I thought this achievement was not possible since I had let too many years go by since I quit school as a teenager. Thankfully, I was wrong. My greatest hope here today is that my story has inspired and encouraged someone else to continue their academic dreams and realize that a higher education is a very realistic and achievable goal. And once you take that first step, the possibilities are endless and the sky is the limit. Thank you. And our last speaker from the Fall River program is Lucy Larrero. To President Jan J. Sprague, Dean Bernadette Driscoll, the Fall River Adult Basic Education Program board members, teachers, staff, fellow classmates, graduates, friends, families, good morning and welcome. I'm Lucy Lorero, um, a wife to an amazing husband, Alex, a mother of two, Cynthia and Ethan, as well as a grandmother to Chloe. I would like to begin by saying how humbled I was when asked to be guest speaker here today. Prior to this journey, I could not imagine myself giving a graduation speech, but this wonderful journey has changed me. I now believe in myself. So, I soon realized that writing a graduation speech is definitely not as easy as it may sound. I didn't want this speech to be just about me, because of all of our stories, though different, are equally important. Although we all had different reasons, we were still brought together to this journey. The reasons that brought us here are no longer important. What is important is the fact that we accomplished this goal. I commend each and every one of you for taking the leap to change your life. Through strength and courage, you have earned your diploma. I found my strength when I could no longer help my 11-year-old son with his homework. He approached me with an algebraic equation that I had no idea how to solve. 
At that moment, it was evident that I needed to prove my education. I wanted to set a good example for my children. My son, Ethan, was now my inspiration to better myself through improving my own education. I took the first step and called the Adultic Basic Education Program here at BCC. Little did I know this call would change my life. Upon entering the classroom for the first time, I was overwhelmed. I didn't want to ex I didn't know what to expect. It had been 34 years since the last time I was in a classroom. Being the oldest person in my class made me a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning, but I knew each individual in the room had his or her own reasons for being there. I also knew failure was not an option. There was great diversity among us, therefore, as you can imagine, my class was never boring. <laughs> this past year has been incredible. I have truly enjoyed every moment I was here. Through a very challenging time, I knew at home I could turn to my husband for support. But here at school, I came to depend on the teachers and staff. Their dedication to us all re resulted in this amazing celebration. In addition, I also got a great job opportunity through this program after I earned my GED. In the fall, I plan on working while attending college at BCC in human resources. Please join me in giving these wonderful teachers and staff a round of applause. My fellow graduates, we completed a GED program that will serve as the platform we use to launch ourselves into the future. Some of us will go on to college, others will go straight into the workforce, but all of us will travel our own paths. No matter where we go or what we do, there are challenges ahead of us. What I'm asking from each of you and myself is to meet those challenges straight on, with your head held high, your heart wide open. It's not enough to simply try to get by in life. That does not move the world forward. We must try to excel in everything we do, strive for excellence in every task, large or small. Although it may not may be easy to see how every accomplishment we, we achieve adds to the world, we must remember our individual successes benefit society as a whole because when you succeed, you lighten the burden on your fellow man. When you succeed, you are in position to give rather than to take. While we might not have the power to inspire the entire world to strive for success, we do have the power to try to achieve it for ourselves. My challenge to each of you and to myself is to do all that we can do to reach our full potential. If each student in this graduation class is able to do that, just imagine the effect that we would have. The future is truly in our hands. So let's make the mo most of it. The sky's the limit. Thank you. Wow, if those weren't inspiring speeches. Next, we will award the Diane McMullen Scholarship. Diane was a champion of the adult learner. She was passionate about addressing the needs for all. Through her selflessness, dedication, and pledge to lifelong learning, she created a home for the adult learner at BCC. I would like to ask her daughters, Katie and Lauren, to please come to the stage to present scholarship in Diane's memory.
Good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations. My name is Katie Brandt, and this is my son, Noah. My name is Lauren Blanchard, and this is my son, Anthony. We are, <laughs> thank you. We are very proud to attend your graduation with our father to present the Diane M. McMorial Scholarship in memory of our mother. When mom passed away four years ago, she was your Dean of Literacy Services. She was an active board member of the Massachusetts Coalition for Adult Education, and she was a tireless advocate for adult learners. Mom was effective at engaging her colleagues here at BCC and leaders within the Fall River community because she was genuine in her commitment and her passion for lifelong learning. As Diane's daughters, Katie and I experienced this passion firsthand. Mom was always interested in what we were learning in school, and she encouraged us to be expressive, critical thinkers. She taught us that education was powerful and could create opportunity and choices for us. She cultivated a love of learning in us that we will pass on to our children. In her role as our mother and your dean, mom knew that if you wanted to have educational success, you had to have the right support in place. The right conditions could be the difference between graduating or giving up. I thought of her recently when I was listening to a report about extreme weather and the impact on our environment. One of the stories covered was about Death Valley in 2005 and how that winter they experienced more rainfall than they had seen in 100 years. And then something incredible happened. That spring, the landscape of Death Valley was transformed from dust and shrubs to a carpet of colorful wildflowers. Bright yellows, purples, and pinks rolled out across millions of acres to prove that Death Valley wasn't dead at all, that just below the surface there was the potential for something beautiful, but it needed the environment to provide the right conditions. This year's scholarship recipient, Tara Horton, is an example of how a mother's love can cultivate that magic environment for educational success. In Tara's application, she wrote about giving the gift of education to her son and how she felt that this was the greatest gift she could give to him. With love, hard work, and many extra hours of study, Tara's son thrived in school, and the A's and B's on his report card today are a sure sign of that success. Seeing her son succeed inspired Tara to want to go back to school to obtain her GED. Today, she has accomplished that goal, showing herself, her son, and all of us that with the right conditions, the potential to blossom is within all of us. We are so proud of Tara and every graduate. Today is the culmination of all the hard work you have put into yourselves. It is the product of all the support that BCC has given you. Our mother would say that today is a milestone on your path of lifelong learning. <clears throat> that today we have just scratched the surface of your potential to bloom. Congratulations! Now is the moment you've all been waiting for, the presentation of awards and certificates.
Please try to hold your applause until all graduates have received their certificates. Thank you. And will the graduates rise? First, we have Rob Bolton. No, Rob. <laughs> Stephen Fannis. Tara Horton. Lucy Larrero, Cody L. Amaral, Karen A. Aruda, highest honors, John P. Belisle, Jr., Honors. Katrina E. Benner, Honors. <laughs> Elena E. Bowles. Jason L. Callahan, Jr. James P. Casey, the sixth highest honors. I want to acknowledge that James got the highest score on the test out of the class. Sarah E. Laura. Angela DeMacco. High honors. David S. DeVries, highest honors. Alexander Echevarria. Ashley A. Dumoulin. Patricia J. Farini. Sandra P. Ferreira. Diane E. Freitas, high honors. Mark P. Fula, Honors. And now a special moment. Our next two graduates, Darlene and Richard Galliott, our mother and son.
Linda G. Gonzalez Honors. Beverly C. Hamlin Honors. Noelle Marie A. Harrington Honors. So Terry Hung. Corey Hudgens. Yeah. Jose L. Inacio. Jessica A. Lang, honors. Devin Lamar, honors. Scott D. Lee, honors. Vanessa M. Marcel. Jesse E. Martin, highest honors. Andrea McCarthy, honors. Megan Moulton, high honors. Natasha L. Oliveira, honors. Adelia Paz. Edward, Edward B. Pereira, Jr. Erica S. Perry. Awilda Pizarro. Alicia A. Rodericks, honors. Sean Ryan, honors. Christina Shane, highest honors. Bruna A. Silva, honors. Samantha L. Silva, honors. Jamie C. Souza, highest honor. Ashley Texera, honors. Scott L. Trahan. Brock Horn. Tanya Russell. Let's give a round of applause to the graduates of 2013.
Members of the BCC Office of Admissions would like me to remind you to stop by their table before you leave today to discuss the various opportunities here at BCC. Okay, I ask that the graduates please rise. and to successfully recognize your completion of all requirements as related to the GED development test as a sign of your official passage from adult basic ed to GED graduate. Please transfer your tassel from the right side of your mortarboard to the left side now. Congratulations to all. I ask that you please stand and remain standing until the recessional is complete and all graduates have left the tent. President Spraga is available to take pictures after the recessional. You can line up on the right side of the stage. I now declare a close to these proceedings of the 28th graduation of Bristol Community's GED class. Thank you and have a wonderful day. <laughs>